Hello, everyone! I'm not wasting any fucking time this time. It's the last notion here. Back for the series finale of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. It has taken way too long to get here. I have put this off a lot. <laughs> um, but we're finally here. The last three episodes of the series. God, this is going to be a long, long recording. <laughs> It's probably not going to feel like it in, while I'm watching it, but good god, it is going to be long. Ah, uh, water. Hydration. I need to have, like, a little, little water bottle, uh, thing. Anyways, um, right, so, we'll just scroll down the list of episodes to find the titles. Uh, last time was the first part, or rather first four parts, of this finale. And we got to see that... Okay, well, first we got Star and, Marco, or Star and Tom breaking up. Then we got... Uh, we got... Uh, asking Janna for directions, basically. <laughs> Which culminated in us going to the Realm of Magic, where we found out that something is corrupting it. Um... Now, I did in, I did take a short break in between recordings, so I found out that the thing corrupting this world, apparently, is the spell with no name that, uh, that Eclipsa created and that Moon tried to perform. Um, and so I don't know how that's going to get resolved. Um... Especially because the last time we saw that spell, it was uh, trapped in a jar. You would think that if all that that spell cares about is destruction, you would try to have it destroy Mina, but maybe that won't work. I don't know. All I do know is that we ended up in Muni, and everybody was scattered. And we're converging on the monster castle where Mina is currently trying to murder Queen Eclipsa. And, uh, doing a pretty good job of it, frankly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's where we left off, literally. Like, that was, that was a huge cliffhanger. Uh, so the titles this time are The Right Way, um... I don't know what that is specifically and what it's referring to. It might be like a speech that Star gives to Mina and the High Commission, but either way, I don't think that any kind of speech is going to work. Here to help, I mean, there's a lot of people, things, whatever that that could refer to. Maybe Moon and River and all of their people finally get off their asses. <laughs> Then we have Pizza Party, of all fucking things. I don't know what that's going to do, how that's going to work out. Um, it has a long description on, on here. I'm not going to read it, but like, yeah. I, I mean, somebody's going to throw a party, uh, try to throw a pizza party, I guess. And then we have the Tavern at the End of the Multiverse, and that is a fucking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. I have no idea what it actually means, though. But I know that there's like like a diner at the end of the universe or something like that that is the title of one of the Hitchhiker's books. And yeah, um, obviously this is going to be the part, like if, if I had to guess, I'd say that's the part where like the, hero, the, the protagonists are all at their lowest point. Everything that could possibly go wrong has gone wrong and now they're trying to recuperate somewhere. And then finally, the last episode, which is a full half hour, called Cleaved. Now, the last time we heard that word was in relation to the broken wand during season two. Uh, that has me majorly concerned. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how it's going to... I, I don't know how it's going to end, but I know it's not going to be pretty in the long run. 
Uh, so yeah. I wonder if we'll see Ludo during all of this. I wonder if we'll see Kelly. I wonder if we'll see a lot of characters. <laughs> like, again, I, I'm wondering if, uh, you know, end game before it was cool type of, type of thing. But either way, this is going to be a long, long recording. And uh, we won't know until we do it. So let's just fucking do it. Switch over. And we will start in three, two, one, play. <laughs> Okay, it hasn't been that long since I stopped recording. Um, just just enough time for, like, I guess the shock to wear off? I mean, it wasn't much... Okay, it was a shock, but, like... Okay, I, I, I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble. It's like, where do I even begin? Um... Okay, let, let, let's start with the right way. Um, I don't know... I don't know what the right way was. <laughs> what it was referring to. I guess maybe Eclipse's spell there, which turns out to be Solaria's spell. Um, which, by the way... Does that technically mean that Solaria was, like, the big bad of the entire fucking show? Because she caused all of this. <laughs> like, the way that she... Like, the, the early Newmans there, free Solaria, like, they didn't seem to mind the monsters as much. Like, they were used to it. They didn't have any of the, the racism that we later see, it seems like. I mean, they might have, but not to the degree that they were, you know, actively trying to oppress monsters. Um, Solaria and her initiatives seems to have been the ones, the one to, uh, the one to make everything go sideways. Um, and then, like, because of that, when Eclipsa grew up and, you know, was herself, <laughs> basically, um, and chose Gobgor over a Muman husband, um, that led to Eclipsa getting put into the, uh, put in, put, let her being imprisoned, um, and that sentiment also passed down even further and was likely what led to Toffee and them being problems and Ludo being a problem. And then because Eclipse's imprisonment, uh, Meteora, and then also Mina, like all of this traced back to Solaria. Um... Which, like, there's a lot that could be said there. Um, and then, like, we know that... But then again, we also know that it all traces back to Glosswork, too, since he's the one who who uh, gave the first Mumins the wand. Um, hmm. So, like, there's a whole host of problems there that uh that or like yeah it's tough to say who's more at fault with all of this is it glossaric or is it solaria like glossaric just gave them a chance he gave them magic and like let them potentially survive on this world but then again, we don't we didn't get any real answers about Glossaric and the dimension of magic 
and whatnot and his history and like why he does what he does so like yeah uh it's tough to say who's more at fault here i'm gonna go with solaria until i hear otherwise um so right uh first episode they finish off the the mina soldier and then meet other rabbits with the rest of the soldiers and we just have all mm -hmm. kinds of problems and then we find out that moon moon allowed moon didn't call okay how do i put this moon took all of these independent factions that would have been a problem on their own you know the magical high commission mina um and the uh the anti-monster mumens that settled with moon and river moon took all of them and she brought them together to become a major problem <laughs> and yeah that's that's a hell of a fuck up like i I don't know how to put this gently, but like, you know what? Screw it. Y'all know me by now. Y'all know that I am a very left, left-leaning political person. All right. And the previous, at time of recording this, president of the United States was a fucking dumbass. And I don't know much about him and his personal politics, and it's impossible to know because he is less defined by those than his desire for money and power. And those desires are, by themselves, in my opinion, pretty fucking evil, all, con all things considered. The mindless accumulation of wealth and power is about as evil a mindset as you can put yourself in. Um, so, there's that. But, I don't even hate him because of that. Alright? I hate this guy. Not, not because of anything that he has done, or anything that he has tried to do. No. I hate him because he is an enabler for a bunch of other people who are way worse than him. People who are bigoted and just terrible. Alright? I don't care that he's a dumbass. I don't care that he's trying to do all this stuff. Like, yeah, he should be punished for his terrible things. But, like, he by himself is not a, not a problem. What is a problem is when he enables a bunch of other people who are way worse on an individual level to just freely act like they're the greatest thing in the world and run rampant. That, it's, that type of enabling is why I hate him. And so what I'm trying to get at here is that Moon, Moon did something pretty fucking similar here. And I'm trying to decide whether her apparent remorse for it, as well as the fact that it did did get out of her control, and she, you know, didn't want all of this stuff to happen. Like, I'm trying to decide whether or not that... That... I'm trying to... I'm, what's the right word? It's not... Not redeem, not absolve. I'm trying to just okay, yeah. I'm trying to decide whether I can forgive this mistake from her. As like as a character, I I appreciate it. I appreciate the writing of her as a character. It was good. I'm trying to decide whether I can still 
like her as a person, so to speak. Because it genuinely was just a mistake. She didn't think it was going to go this far. Like, it's still terrible what she did, and her mindset behind it is still terrible. But she genuinely thought she was doing the right thing. She seemed to show remorse. She didn't want it to go this way. But it doesn't change the fact that her actions are directly responsible for all of these terrible things happening. The destruction, the traumatizing things that happen, like, Jesus Christ. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. I, I would need more follow-up here from Moon in order to decide one way or the other, because right now... Kind of about this. Right now, she's almost in the same place that the Diamonds were at at the end of Steven Universe. Like, she has done some terrible shit here, or enabled some terrible shit. And regardless of what her intentions were, or her beliefs were, or whatever, what really matters at this juncture is what she chooses to do in the future. And we haven't seen that. So, like... It's impossible to pass judgment on her as a kid. Like, as a character, she's great. But as a person, I, I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Um, and that's kind of frustrating, honestly. I want to know how to feel about a character. Um, like, even the diamonds at the end of Steven Universe, did, I, did, I did have a little bit more to go on there because... They chose to participate in in the healing of the other gems there and fix their mistake and be better moving forward. Like, we, we had a direction for them and, you know, the world of, that, of the show at the end that I feel like we're missing here. Um, so that... Yeah, that was a that was a huge rant, and I kind of got distracted from where I was going, which was through the actual plot. Um, where did I leave off? Right. Uh, right, so we found out about Moon, and then we had uh, the flashback to see Mina's origin, which was, yeah, pretty, pretty damning um, towards Solaria. Uh, and then... Then we actually had the escape and Hekapu, you know, being non-sus. Okay, she's still a little sus with her blase, blase? Is that the word? Her casual attitude. And, yeah, the whole thing with the tavern, like, I don't know. That was, that was just weird. Also, the guy falling into non-existence was pretty fucked up. Uh, Star basically told her mother to go die, which was, like, ballsy as all hell, but also not completely unwarranted. <laughs> um, but yeah, the decision to, to destroy the magic. Um, Star laid it out pretty well, actually. Like, every problem that they have had has been caused by magic, or at least people using magic. Um, so in this case, I can I can kind of get the logic, especially because getting rid of magic doesn't seem to have actually affected magical beings like Tom or Ponyhead or whatever. So, like, their abilities may be, may be diminished, but it appears that they have certain amount of natural abilities or natural magic or something that allows them to continue continue the way that they were. Um, and we don't know for sure what happened to the members of the Magical High Commission. Uh, 
the way that it was set up there, it kind of implies that, oh yeah, no, they're just dead. That Star and Eclipsa and Moon just straight up fucking murdered them. Um, which I'm going to choose to believe that is not the case. In fact, I'm going to choose to believe that the portal at the end there was like Hekapu trying to trying to help out one last time. Um, might not be the case. Maybe that that portal actually was literally Hekapu and her last, you know, dying consciousness or whatever, trying to trying to help out um, in some way. But uh, I don't know. But I'm going to choose to believe that they're still alive, that they just no longer have their abilities, and that uh, that Star did not commit triple homicide. Because that would be fucked up. Uh, yeah, and then we got the merge. Merge. <laughs> the merge is the biggest part of the esoteric happy ending that I have heard this series have has. And frankly, I, I kind of agree. I think this merge was a very fucked up decision overall. Because no matter how you look at it, things are going to be bad now. Like, first of all, it the way that it was, I mean, it was pretty patchwork, but it didn't seem like it was implying that the planet got any bigger or got more resources. So unless it was only a localized merge, taking taking the people of uh of Marco's hometown there, which I forget forget what the fuck it was actually called. Um I think it started with an E. But unless it was only taking that specific town and merging it into Muni, which I doubt, then you're now gonna have to have all the people of Earth, which, I mean, okay, when 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 did this air? Uh, 2019. Oh boy, 2019. Um, yeah, we're still over, still well over seven and a half billion humans on the Earth at, at in that year. Um, maybe not on Star's Earth or. Well, yeah, I guess it would be Star's Earth now. But, like, maybe that wasn't how many were on the Earth of the show. But, like, I'm pretty sure the actual amount is still in the billions. Whereas, you know, humans seem to be maybe, what, thousands at, at, at worst. So, like, you're now going to have the problem of humans versus monsters... Only now you're going to also throw in there humans who did not even know that monsters existed. Most of them. And now you're going to have a, just a shit ton of problems there. Uh, of everybody trying to now live with this new reality. And most of them aren't even going to know what the fuck happened. So... Once again, because we don't have anything to contradict it, I'm going to go with the localized merge option. It was only Marco's hometown. That's still pretty fucked up. There's still a lot of people who were, uh, you know, what's the word there? Living peaceful lives without having to deal with any of this shit, but now they suddenly are, so like, yeah, that's, that's pretty fucked up. Um, but, like, it, it's less fucked up than, like, the entirety of the planet Earth is now, uh, now merged with Muni and way more problems. Um, so, yeah. And, uh, the, the obvious question is, well, like, with how problematic this is in general, like, why the fuck would the writers think this was okay? And I cannot speak for them, but... I mean, I think the obvious enough answer is they couldn't decide. Like, okay, let me let me break break it down. I I think the writers came to the same realization as me that they made Mina 
too fucking overpowered. And so there was no way to to beat her head on that they that they that wouldn't just seem like a complete fucking ass pull. So they were like, okay, well then we'll destroy the magic. That if you destroy the magic, you destroy Nina's power source, that that'll defeat her. Right? Um which makes sense. But then you run into the problem. Well, if you destroy the magic, now there's no portals. And now Star and Marco can't go back and forth between Earth and Muni. Uh, we, and so we'll have to put them on one, one or the other. But also now we have the problem of, well, we made a promise to have Mariposa and uh, Meteora grow up together as sisters. That can't happen if they're in separate dimensions with no portals. Just a whole bunch of fuckery there. So it's like, okay. We have to destroy the magic to defeat Mina. With, we've written ourselves into that corner. And we can't really decide on which dimension to have Star and Marco end up in. And that doesn't solve the problem of, you know, the promise we made earlier in the series with Meteora and Mariposa. What the fuck do we do? We could merge the two worlds together, I guess? Sure, that'll work. Maybe. <laughs> uh it's 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 so fucked up. It, like it's so fucked up and honestly, I don't know how they could have avoided it, but like yeah, I once again, I I have to wonder if Disney didn't shorten their episodes because like if they'd had a few more episodes, they might have also been able to write in a weakness for for Mina and the excuse me, the Solarian Warriors that would allow them to not have to have this ending. That would have allowed them to maybe do this in some way that wouldn't have required destroying the magic. I mean, there's also then the question of, you know, the unicorn, the, the destruction unicorn, and that. Um... Yeah, like I, I, I totally feel like half of this half of this finale feels like it was mapped out perfectly well ahead of time, and then half of it feels like they just pulled shit out of their ass because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Like, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it was bad, and there are definitely ways that you can headcanon this to not be, you know, the worst, like, like, too terrible of an outcome but i'm not going to pretend that this was a good like a truly great ending to the series at all um it went by way too fast and yeah that being said i i, I do feel like they probably did the best that they could under the circumstances that they were in i'd have to look up what those circumstances were more and i'm not going to do that right now but yeah um, so yeah, and then, you know, Star and Marco ending together, it was cute enough. I, I still have all my same issues that I have voiced before with this series where it's just like, yeah, no, they're just fucking kids. Why did they have to pick right now? Uh, but, you know, I don't need to go over that again and again and again. I've already done that. Um... Now, I think the last thing that I want to talk about is Nina's final little speech there. Which is that she's not wrong. Mina is defeated. She's probably no longer immortal in the way that the Solarian Warriors seem to have been. Um, she's still crazy, though. Because the... The thing about her was that even before she gained the Solarian Warrior power, she was agreeing with she was agreeing with Solaria. And like that's the part that makes Mina dangerous. She she truly believes that propaganda, the the bigotry, the hatred. Like those ideas, they spread way too easily. And 
it's not gonna if anything the ending of this series with the worlds merging that's gonna give mina even more fodder because now she's gonna have a bunch of people who have never dealt with monsters in their life who don't know how to survive in this world and she's going to she's gonna be able to if she gets a pulpit she's gonna be able to convince them to follow her and that's not cool so the way the way i see it yeah mina was spot on with what she was saying those ideas her ideas she says they're good ideas they're not they're terrible ideas they're they're just awful they're the absolute worst and anyone who says anything like those ideas in real life is it just barking up the wrong tree needs needs to take a step back probably reevaluate their entire life um and get some mental help but yeah no those those ideas don't die just because the person who was spouting them was defeated or silenced or whatever and oftentimes yeah that can make that person a martyr for others um so that's that yeah that's the hard part to fight terrible ideas like that you're you're always gonna you're always gonna come out of it looking bad you know you can't you can't deal with shit without coming off with stink on you you know that like I, i'm pretty sure that's the phrase like With, with with this sort of thing, there's no no good answer, frankly. And you know, you can say all you want about whether the show handled it right or wrong, but at its core, they were they're right. They they understand what they're talking about. Um and what what their metaphors are all about you know there's no uh no sugarcoating it right there racism bigotry fascism all all kinds of stuff like that like that's what this show ended up being about and it is a very timely show even now like it it ended three years ago which is honestly <laughs> yeah no no it it it, it it ended right right in the middle of a time when it's the things that the show was talking about were more relevant than ever well i should say not more relevant than ever because they're more relevant than ever right fucking now in the present day um and frankly i feel like they're only going to get more relevant within the next couple years because things are not getting truly better um, and frankly, it's scary. <sighs> yeah, the world is, the world is going nuts, man. That's why, I, that's why I usually like these shows to be more lighthearted, um, and allow me to, you know, not think about that. I don't mind when stuff like this comes up, because it gives me stuff to talk about, but like, this is some heavy shit. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So that was Star vs. the Forces of Evil, I guess. We're gonna try I'm gonna try and wrap this up here. Um I mean, the show as a whole, you know, it had its misdesigns episodes. It 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 has never made my top five. My top five Western series. Um Oh my god, I hate I hate those people. inconsiderate every one of them anyways um yeah no star versus has never made my top five western series it's good it's probably in the top 10 maybe it might only be top 15 uh, i i'm not sure i've watched a lot of different animated shows over the years <laughs> um but no it's it's, it's good it's good it but it had its problems, it had its misses, it had 
you know, the ending... The ending seems to have a lot of the sim a lot of similar problems to Steven Universe, but maybe not handled as well, which is saying something because a lot of people already take issue with how Steven Universe handled its ending. Um, and frankly, you know, I wouldn't mind like a movie or a special even now, you know, years later, I would not not mind a movie or special dealing with the aftermath of all of this. Um. I'm not sure, like, you'd have to have a, a big bad or a con some kind of, like, major conflict. And I'm not really sure who it could be. Um, but, who knows? Um, yeah. Anything else? I mean, I, I had the random thought about, like, taking away the magic is like taking away guns. And I could make that whole argument. But, like... I'm not going to. <laughs> um, I mean, just saying that it should be fairly evident what uh, what I mean by it. Um, if you can't make the connections, then I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to help you with that. I don't know how to increase your, your brain function. So allow that. Anyway, um, not trying to insult my audience. Just, you know... Some people, some people aren't, uh, aren't smart. <laughs> um, I'm not saying I'm smarter. Uh, okay, yeah, no, that, that came out completely fucked up. I'm sorry to anyone that I may have just inadvertently insulted. Sort of. Just, I, I don't feel like that is something I should need to spell out. Magic, guns, like, parallels are there and should be fairly self-evident. In any case, though, <sighs> right, let's, before I completely shoot myself in the foot with my words even, even more, <laughs> let's, uh, let's bring this one to a close. This is, uh, this is Flash Notion, signing off for the last time in, in regards to Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Hopefully, everybody who has watched me watch this series will continue to stick around the channel and will continue to uh, explore other reactions of mine that I have done in the past, as well as uh, continue to, you know, watch future reactions from me. Um, still haven't picked out the next new series, but we've got enough uh, continuations to deal with that I'm not too concerned about that right now. Oh. In any case, until next time, bye bye and oh my god, the fucking base, you fucking cut! What a way to end this series. <laughs> uh, bye!